Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we showed you how to find the subsequent state matrices when we start with an initial state matrix and a transition matrix. So here we have an example where we have, say, let's say, three stores, stores A, B, and C. We had customers going back and forth between the stores. We also had customers loyal to the stores staying in the store. For example, 70% of the customers that go to store B stay in store B. And so we set up a state matrix for that. Uh, I'm, I should say a transition matrix for that. So we have stores A and B, A, B, and C. So from A to A is 0.6, and that would be right here. So 60% of this, this customers stay in store A. Uh, the customers going from A to B is 30%. So from A to B is 30%. And so here we have what we call a transition matrix that shows us the transition of customers between stores A, B, and C. And then we have what we call initial state matrix, which is right here, which is the initial state saying that we, the customers of all the customers available between stores A, B, and C, 40% go to A, 50% go to B, and 10% go to C. Now, with this transition matrix, what will be the ultimate state B? What will be the next state, and the next state, the next state, and so forth? So what we can do is we can multiply what we call the initial state matrix, X of naught, times the transition matrix to get the next state, X of 1. And then we can take the first state, or state 1, multiply times the transition matrix, and get state 2. And that's what we did in the previous video. But we can also get to the second state, by taking the transition matrix, multiplying it by itself, and get what we call, oop, not the P sub 2, I should say, but the P square matrix. In other words, we multiply the transition matrix by itself. We're going to do that here. And then we can find the second state by taking the initial state matrix and multiplying times the, the transition matrix squared. And we should get the exact same result that we got over here. This is state 2, and we should get the same result by multiplying the initial state matrix times the transition matrix squared, they get the second state. And let's see if that's indeed true. So first we have to do the uh, multiplication. We multiply the transition matrix by itself and see what we get. So they get the first element, we multiply this times this. They get, well, well actually it's this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. We go horizontally across this way and vertically across this way. So that would be, well, actually for that I don't need a calculator yet. That'd be 36, that'd be 42, that'd be 45. So that would be 0 0.45. So what I do is I multiply this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, will get me that. The next one would be this row times this column to get the next element. So we multiply, that would be 18, 21, that would be 39, plus uh, 2, that would be 0 0.41. And here we get we multiply this row times this column to get 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 5 is 14, 0 0.14. We can also check to see now if we have things correct or not. If we add all the numbers up in the horizontal direction from left to right, this should add up to 1. So we get 0.45 plus 0.41 plus 0.86 plus 0.14. That is indeed 1. So, so far, so good. Now to get the three elements of the second row, we take the second row here, multiply it times this, times this, and times this to get the three elements. So 0.2 times 0.6, that's 12, plus 14 is 26, plus 3 is 29, so 0 0.29. Next we multiply this row times this column, that's 6, that's 49, that's 55, that's 57, 0 0.57. And finally, we multiply this row times this column, we get 2, 7, that's 9, plus that's 14, 0 0.14. Again, a quick check to make sure we have it correct. We add these together, that'll be 86 plus 14, 100. Yep, so far so good. Now to get the three elements of the third row, we multiply this row times the three columns like this. So we go 18 plus 4 is 22, plus 15, that's 37, so 0 0.37. Next, we have this row times this column. That would be 9 plus 14 is 23, plus 10 is 33, 0 0.33. And finally, we multiply this row times this column. Get 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 25 is 30, 0 0.30. And again, if we did this correctly, this should add up to 1. So that would be 0.7. Yep. All right. So that is correct. So now we can show that if we take the initial state matrix and multiply it times the transition matrix squared, we should get the second state. So let's try that. So we're going to multiply the initial matrix, which is 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 
0 0.1 and we're going to multipl multiply times the the uh, transition matrix squared that would be 0 0.45 0 0.413 0 0.30 0 and let's see what we get and the way that, that happens is we're going to end up with the uh, state matrix it's going to have three elements in it the first element is going to be found by multiplying this row times this column that will give us the first element now I'm going to need my calculator so 0.4 times 0.45 0.4 times 0.45 plus 0.5 times 0.29, 0.5 times 0.29 plus 0.1 times 0.37 equals, and we get 0 0.362, 0 0.362. Quick check to make sure I get the same result that I got over here, and you see it's already shaping up to the right, uh, what we call state matrix. Okay, now we're going to multiply this row times this column to get the second element. So 0 0.4 times 0 0.41, 0 0.4 times 0 0.41, plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.57, plus 0 0.1 times 0 0.33. And we get 0 0.482, and sure enough, I get the same number as I got over there. So... It looks like this works. Finally, to get the third element, we're going to multiply this row times this column. See, so we get so 0 0.4 times 0 0.14 plus 0.5 times 0 0.14 plus 0.1 times 0 0.30. And we get 0 0.156, 0 0.156. And you can see we get the exact same state matrix. This here is the second state is equal to the initial state times p squared. That's the transition matrix squared. And you can see that works. So now you can see that if you want the third state, we can take the initial state matrix and multiply times p cubed. So we have to multiply uh, this times p to get p cubed. And then we can get the fourth state by multiplying the initial state times p to the fourth and so forth. And so we can continue doing this process until we finally get a stable state matrix. So then what will the uh, exponent need to be? Is it p to the fifth, p to the sixth, p to the eighth, p to the tenth? Well, in the next videos we'll show you how to find the final st uh, stable state matrix by going through a process similar to this but actually a shortcut method to get to the final value. So what we want to know essentially is as this process continues week after week, let's say again that A, B, and C are simply stores and the percentages you see here are the percentage of the customers going from one store to the next. This continues to happen over a while. This transition of the customers is represented by the transition matrix from these stores to these stores. And as that plays out over time, over week after week, eventually the stores are going to end up with a different distribution of customers than what they started with. This will be the initial state matrix, meaning the initial distribution of customers. And finally, when we get the final stable state matrix, we have the final distribution of customers. And that's how we can use this methodology to see what will happen in the future. And if you like this, stay tuned and we'll show you some more ways in which we can calculate those stable matrices. And that's how we do that.